Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with How I Discovered Composer X. And Composer X is Brahms. How did I discover Brahms? You know what? It's really been fun doing this series, first of all, because, as I said, your answers have been so wonderful. I'm so interested in how you discovered these these composers, but also because it forces me to really think back to the beginning of things and where I first encountered them. And Brahms is actually fairly easy. My first encounter with Brahms was the Brahms lullaby, because my mother actually sang it to me. And if you knew my mother's voice, well, you know, that's a whole other issue. That side of the family was notorious for their their lack of, of singing prowess. But the Brahms lullaby in English was something I knew when I was really, really, really little. And I knew it as Brahms lullaby. I didn't know Brahms was a person. I just thought the thing was called Brahms lullaby, you know, or or it wasn't written by Brahms. It was the one that was sang to Brahms. I don't know. I never thought I didn't know who Brahms was. I didn't care. I was a little kid, you know, and all I heard was ya da 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 ya da 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 It was lullaby and good night, shut your big fat boogie eyes. I don't know, I don't remember how the words went. It had lilies and a bed and lay ye down now and rest. May your slumber be blessed. That was Brahms lullaby. I remember it like it was yesterday. Unbelievable. I don't know how old I was when my mother sang it to me. Two? I don't know. Anyway, Brahms lullaby. I, I, I knew what it was called because mom always made sure we knew what things were. She was a teacher and she taught. So it was Brahms lullaby. And that's how I first heard the name Brahms. I didn't associate it with anything else. And then later I heard Brahms first symphony because it was like my mother's favorite piece of the whole world. I mean, when, when I did... When we did, we did, you know, most beautiful melodies and whatnot. Mom insisted I do the finale of Brahms first. I mean, Brahms first was her piece. And so we all knew Brahms first. We heard it fairly frequently. And again, I never associated Brahms for a symphony with the Brahms lullaby. I never put them together. And for for me growing up, Brahms was, it was he was a one-shot wonder. He wrote Brahms first. But the, the fact that there was a second or a third or a fourth, I had no idea. And in fact, those two works, the lullaby and the first symphony, were so much a part of my everyday life, my sort of DNA, musically speaking, that when I started to listen to other music, to serious music, to classical music, and I became conscious that there was a sort of body of work out there that people called classical that was, you know, composers who wrote pieces. I never thought of Brahms as one of those at all. I just knew Brahms first and I knew Brahms lullaby and I didn't need any more. And so when I started listening to classical music, I was not naturally someone who was drawn to Brahms. It's very funny because those two pieces were completely internalized, but the rest of Brahms didn't interest me at all. I liked lots of other music better than I liked Brahms to the extent I knew any more Brahms. And I didn't. I really didn't. I didn't know very much. I, 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 I liked Dvorak. I liked, I liked oh, you know, Tchaikovsky. <laughs> yeah, and I was like Beethoven. I was really really aware of who they were as composers, as composers of a body of work. But Brahms, he was completely unknown to me other than the guy who wrote the lullaby and, and the first symphony. So eventually, as time went on, um, I started listening to more Brahms, obviously, and I didn't like him very much. I mean, there was some stuff I liked, I, granted, but I mean, in, as far as the other symphonies went, um, I really liked the third immediately. I had the the Klemper recording of the third, and I thought it was really, really cool. I loved Brahms' third. Of course, I thought it sounded a lot like Dvorak's fifth, which I had known from my, my hunting around Goodwill Industries a few years previously. But I liked Brahms' third because I thought it sounded like Dvorak. Um, and the Brahms fourth, I thought, was really a cool piece. I never liked the second symphony. It took a long, long, long time for me to get into the second symphony. And it shocked me reading about it that it was as popular as it was because I thought it was incredibly boring, especially the first movement. It just put me to sleep, the first two movements. Um, and eventually I came to appreciate it and like it, even love it sometimes. But that was a lot of work. 
a tremendous amount of work. And to this day, I don't find Brahms to be a particularly easy composer. I think he's a difficult composer. I think he's a challenging composer. I, I, I completely take issue with people who claim that he's deeper and and more profound and more meaningful and all that because he was German and because he's a symphonist and because his music is analyzable in terms of sophisticated harmonic theory or Schoenberg liked him. I don't, I don't buy any of those things. I think he's a tough composer. And it's taken me a very, very long time. Um, it's an ongoing process, my encounter with Brahms. And, you know, the more, the more I listen... Uh, the more I tend to enjoy it, but it takes some effort. It really does. You have to begin to really appreciate chamber music, I think, to love Brahms. Um, and now, of course, my favorite like work in the universe is the Brahms Second Sextet, the G Major Sextet, which I think is one of the most glorious pieces of music anybody ever wrote. But again, that was a very, very late experience. My first experience of that sextet that I remember, that I remember as, as, as having it hit me, was only a few years ago. It was at a Christmas soiree given by, by Styra Avens, the Brahms scholar in her apartment, in her little apartment um, in Greenwich Village with some friends, and they played the sextet, and I turned pages. I was playing, I was turning pages for the quintet the pianist and the quintet. And then they played the sextet. And I just sat there in the middle of these six string players and listened to it. And it was an experience like I've never had before. It blew me away completely. Um, which, you know, one of the things about my discovery of Brahms that I think has really been so rewarding, actually, is that it has come late. And, you know, it, he wasn't a composer. So many people grow up in the classical music world, particularly, you know, you're, you're taught you have to love Brahms. You know, he's the three Bs, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms. You must love them. You must respect them. You must honor them. You must worship them. You know? I, and I, I was never taught any of that. I was never taught I had to like anything I didn't like. And so that's the way it went. And so the wonderful thing about it for me is that it's been an ongoing discovery. Even late in life, you know, you never stop. You never stop learning and listening and you never, you never stop giving things a second chance and hearing things that you didn't know existed. I mean, it's, Brahms has been one of the great thrills of my, my later listening experience because he wasn't, he was part of my early listening experience to a degree, but not as Brahms, you know, Brahms with a capital B. Brahms was just the lullaby guy and the first symphony guy. But he's only become Brahms with a capital B in the past few years because of my association with people who knew and loved the music and who could talk about it intelligently and, and, and awaken in me a fascination and a desire to get to know it better. Um, all of which goes to show that we need to keep on listening, don't we? So let's do that. Thank you so much for joining me and let me hear about your discovery of Brahms. Take care.